Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about arguments for the existence of God, and this time we'll discuss the moral argument. First, like last episode, there are a few terms that might be helpful before we begin to look at this argument. 1. Objective. Based on facts rather than feelings or opinions. In other words, something which is objective is real and valid even if no one agrees with it. 2. Subjective. Based on feelings or opinions rather than facts. The opposite of objective. Since they're only based on feelings, subjective things can't be real or valid, no matter how many people agree that they are. 3. Value. Importance or worth. Now, on to the argument. Premise 1. If God doesn't exist, objective moral values don't exist. Premise 2. Objective moral values do exist. Conclusion. Therefore, God exists. Now let's look at the evidence for the premises. Premise 1. In order for moral values to be objective, they need to really exist in some manner, and that means that they need to have a foundation of some kind, a basis for their existence. What is it that makes, for example, murdering an innocent person wrong? If God exists, the answer is that God simply is the source and true nature of moral good. Therefore, murdering like this would be wrong, because it was contrary to his nature. That forms a solid basis for objective moral values, and they've got to have some kind of basis or they can't be objective. The only real arguments against this point are about what the basis of moral values actually is. Three alternative bases can be proposed, but I'll be dealing with them in the first three objections. In any case, if God is the only sufficient basis for objective moral values, then premise one is definitely correct. Premise two. Very few people want to argue with premise two because doing so means admitting that no dictator, slave master, corrupt government official, or businessman, no criminal of any sort, has ever done anything really wrong. It means admitting that there's no real moral difference between giving a bowl of soup to a starving man and driving a knife into his heart. We all know that's not the case. It's not just unpleasant when someone punches you with brass knuckles and steals your wallet. It's morally evil. All of our experiences indicate this, and we have no evidence that these things aren't morally evil. Therefore, the most reasonable conclusion is that moral values really are objective. After all, if moral values were all based on feelings, then right and wrong would be, essentially, all in your head. Nothing could be really wrong. Conclusion As long as both premises are true, the conclusion follows from them. The existence of objective moral values implies a god to provide a foundation or basis for them. This seems like a good argument. What kinds of objections could be brought against it? Objection 1. Some impersonal force might be a sufficient basis for objective moral values, disproving premise 1. Reply. In order to be a sufficient basis for objective moral values, the force in question would need to be morally perfect and would therefore need to be what's called a moral agent. Impersonal forces, inanimate objects, and even things like plants and animals aren't moral agents because none of them can make moral decisions. For example, a rock can't choose to help someone or to get in their way. It's just a rock. It does what a rock does, but that's not a morally praiseworthy thing for the rock to do. Animals are the same way. They can't commit immoral acts because they can't make moral choices. When a tiger pounces on a wild boar, it's not committing murder. Only people who can make moral choices can even be affected by moral values. For example, when you get a 100% score on a test, you've gotten a perfect score. But you can't get a perfect score unless you have a pencil to do the test with. In the same way, you can't be morally perfect unless you can make moral choices. So, no impersonal force is a sufficient basis for objective moral values. Objection 2. Okay, even if moral agents need to be personal, objective moral values could still be based on individual people rather than God. Reply. Which individual people? Are they based on one specific person? If so, who is that person? If not, if the claim is that moral values depend on each individual person as their foundation, 
then that's no different from claiming that moral values are subjective, and there's just no evidence to support that. If each individual person was the basis of their own value set, that would mean that each personal value set would be different, and therefore there wouldn't be any objective moral values after all. Objection 3. Maybe individual people can't provide a good enough basis for moral values, but humanity as a whole can. Reply. The problem is that moral values believed in by one generation of people might be different from those believed in by another generation. Which is right? Again, the values aren't objective as long as they're based on morals. Also, this claim turns moral values into a cultural trend. If you're only offending humanity by committing an evil act, how is being evil any different from being tacky? There just wouldn't be any difference between an immoral action, like stealing your neighbor's stereo, and a simple unfashionable choice, like wearing colors that clash. That's clearly not the case. Objection 4. Premise 2 is just an appeal to emotion. Nobody wants to admit that moral values are subjective just because it makes them feel bad. Reply. That's not true. Premise 2 isn't based on how bad it feels to reject objective moral values. It's based on our experiences with morality. As I said in my defense of the second premise, there are many absurd implications if you reject objective moral values, but it's not about how those implications make you feel. Objection 5. This is just an ad hominem argument. Even if a person believes that God doesn't exist and becomes an atheist, they can still do very moral things. Reply. Sure they can, but this argument isn't about whether belief in God is required for moral values. This argument is about whether God's existence is required for moral values. These are very different claims. Objection 6. Your morals are obviously faulty, so God can't possibly be the source of moral values. Reply. This objection is just an argument ad hominem. Even if I'm completely wrong in some or even all of my moral positions, that doesn't invalidate this argument. Even if you could prove that every religious believer in the world was wrong on some moral issue, that wouldn't disprove this argument. In fact, all it would prove would be that it's possible to be wrong on moral issues, and therefore that premise two is correct, and moral values really are objective. So it follows that God is the best explanation of the existence of objective moral values, which is a strong reason to believe that God exists. Next time, can evil teach us anything about God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.